Hey, welcome to Nourishable. I'm Dr. Lara. I've been very compelled by the growing research around intermittent fasting, so I decided to run my own personal N of 1 experiment on myself. Today I'll share my week one results. Intermittent fasting is a period of eating and not eating. Instead of focusing on specifically what you eat, intermittent fasting prescribes a time frame of when you eat and when you don't. Research in animals and some short human studies indicate it has potential as a tool for weight loss and maintaining a healthy metabolism, which may reduce chronic disease risk. Check out my intermittent fasting video for a more in-depth analysis. There are several different methods of intermittent fasting. For my self-experiment, I decided to try the 16-8 time-restricted feeding method, in which you have an 8-hour eating window followed by a 16-hour fasting period. My primary research question was whether this eating pattern was sustainable for me. Dietary patterns will only lead to lasting health impacts if they're sustainable. My secondary research questions were whether time-restricted feeding would lead to any changes in caloric intake, body weight, percent body fat, waist circumference, glucose metabolism, or hunger ratings. I designed my experiment for one month. I predicted that I would find time-restricted feeding sustainable for my regular day-to-day -day routine, but probably not on vacation. I also predicted that I would have some loss of fat mass, though I was starting at a really healthy baseline so I didn't predict any drastic changes. I also wanted to closely monitor lean body mass and physical activity because I would stop the experiment if I saw decreases in either of these parameters. This is not the first YouTube video documenting a personal intermittent fasting experiment, but the weakness in many of these other studies is that they don't have good baseline data for comparison. So I collected one week of baseline data. I tracked all the food I ate using MyFitnessPal. I rated my hunger out of 10 before breakfast and lunch. My Garmin Fitness Tracker collected steps, heart rate, and sleep data. Biometrics were assessed by body weight, waist circumference, and I used the skin fold thickness method to measure percent body fat. I used a glucose meter to measure my fasting blood glucose concentration, and then I performed a glucose tolerance test by drinking a sugary beverage and measuring my blood glucose concentration over two hours. After one week of baseline tracking, I started my time-restricted feeding experiment. I set my eating window from noon to 8 p.m. When I woke up, I would drink water and black coffee until noon. And now for the results. During the week, I lost three quarters of a pound with no change in percent body fat or waist circumference. Surprisingly, I had the same average caloric intake on baseline and intermittent fasting days. Of course, there are issues with accurately measuring food intake. So I know that my data was more accurate when I cooked and measured all my food at home compared to when I went out to eat. But even when I compared days where I only ate home cooked meals, I only I only ate 100 fewer calories when I was intermittent fasting. My primary research question was whether this eating pattern would be sustainable for me. And the answer is a resounding no. I only lasted six days. I've been a regular breakfast eater for my whole life, and so I was starving by the time it was noon. My average hunger ratings were 9.3 out of 10 just before noon. All I could do was obsess about food from 10 a.m. until noon, and then I would gorge myself until I was uncomfortably full. To me, it felt really wrong to restrict food when I was so hungry. I stopped after six days because I felt like I was starting to develop an unhealthy relationship with food. So I've reverted back to my old healthy habits of eating a wholesome breakfast with meals centered around fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and protein, and incorporating 60 minutes of fun physical activity per day. I'm curious to see how the research on intermittent fasting continues to progress in humans with longer and bigger studies. I still think it's possible for it to be one healthy tool that works for some people, but not necessarily for everybody. And I don't consider this experiment a failure, but rather a success because it conclusively answered my research question, which is whether time-restricted feeding is sustainable for me. It's not. There are some characteristics that are certainly the foundation of all healthy lifestyles, like eating lots of fruits and vegetables, reducing refined grains and added sugars, and getting plenty of physical activity. But there are other characteristics that are more specific to individuals. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for watching Nourishable. Hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all things nutrition.